two processes P1 and P2 need to access a critical section of the code. So consider the following synchronization construct used by the processes. Wants1 and wants2 are shared variables and which are initialized to false. So this is the method which is used by process P1 and this is the method used by process P2. So we have to see which one of the following statements is true about the above construct. So it does not ensure mutual exclusion, bounded weighting, uh, it requires that processes enter the critical section in strict alternation. It does not prevent deadlock but ensures mutual exclusion. So let's look at the, the methods that are being used by P1 and P2. We have been given that these two variable wants1 and wants2 are initially in initialized to false. So this is the current status. So let's see P1 is executing and P2 is not executing currently. So P1 executes. So it says that while true, wants1 is equal to true. So wants1 becomes true and wants2, it's still the initial value which is false. So while wants2 is equal to true, do nothing. So it just loops. But wants2 is false over here. That means it will come out of this loop and P1 can enter the critical section and then change wants1 back to false. So in this case, P1 can enter the critical section if this is the case. Now let's say P1 is not running and only P2 is running. So let's consider this case that we started with this case of the initial values and P2 started running. So while true, wants2 is equal to true. So we are in this condition, wants2 is equal to true and wants1 is equal to false. While wants1 is equal to true, do nothing. But here wants1 is equal to false, so P2 can enter the critical section and then after it is done with the critical section, it can change back the value of wants2 to false, so P2 can enter the critical section. We also see that if wants1 and wants2 uh, both were false, and now let us see P1 and P2 both are running. So let's say P1 executes this uh, statement, wants1 is equal to true, so wants1 becomes true and then there is a context switch and P2 starts running, so it changes its value to wants2 is equal to true also, okay. So now if P1 sees while wants2 is equal to true, it will keep on looping. It will not enter the critical section. For P2 also, while wants1 is equal to true, it will keep on lo looping and not be able to enter the critical section. And until one of these enters the critical section, the values cannot be changed. So we are seeing that P1 is also waiting for wants2 value to be changed and P2 is change, waiting for the wants1 value to be changed. So here in this case, there is a possibility of deadlock. So here P1 and P2, if both they start running and change the values of wants1 and wants2 to true in this case, there is a possibility of deadlock. Whether mutual exclusion is being ensured or not, let's see. So if wants2 is equal to true, then P1 does not enter the critical section. If wants2 is equal to true, then only P2 can enter the critical section and if wants1 is equal to true then only P1 can enter, P2 cannot enter. So here we are seeing that at any given time only one process either P1 or P2 is able to access the critical section. So definitely mutual exclusion is being ensured but there is a possibility of deadlock. So this option D, so it says it does not prevent deadlock but ensures mutual exclusion, this is the correct answer.